Kevin Clear here with a knife video for you. And today I'm going to talk about something, do something that I'll probably regret. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments down below in regards to this or anything else that you might want to talk about. But specifically, I'd love to hear some of your feedback in regards to this particular discussion. We are going to talk about Rockwell hardness testing and blade steel testing that has been going on with a number of YouTubers and a number of others in the community. Uh, we're going to talk about the results and how the community has responded to that. And so that's where we're going to go in the next few minutes. But first off, let me let me uh, put out, point out one important principle. I am a fan of accountability. I'm a fan of truth. I'm a fan of facts. And so I have no problem whatsoever with the people who want to do this testing and who want to put the information out there for the community. I think accountability is fantastic, especially when it comes to large corporations who have been notoriously bad for trying to keep secrets from the general public. And so I'm a big fan of accountability. I'm a big fan of getting that information out there and allowing us as users to know a little more about the products we're using. I absolutely agree with all of that and have no issue whatsoever, okay? And so my first point that I guess, so that's the first principle that I wanna point out there. The first response that I want to make to that is that people, I guess, manufacturers, politicians, you know, anyone, any large institution really needs to be on notice at this point that the time when you could keep secrets from the general public is gone. Okay, get over it, move on with life. You're going to have to be more transparent because if you're not, the things that you're trying to hide are going to come out anyway and it's going to look a lot worse. All right, so companies have got to stop trying to keep things secret from their customers because it just doesn't work. And, and we're seeing all kinds of this. So the whole Me Too movement with Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein and, and all of that, you know, those those people came up in a time when if you were rich and powerful, you could keep secrets, all right? And so they, they begot, became used to that and behaved accordingly, all right? Uh, and, and they're not the only ones. You know, think of, you know, JFK, for example, is now known to be a notorious philanderer, where at the time when he was in office, most people didn't realize that he was immoral that way to, that de to the degree that he was. Um, we recently got the information about Martin Luther King Jr., right? The same thing. So these people came up before there was the internet and they worked under this assumption that the, the wealthy and powerful and influential can do what they want and we can keep information fairly easily from getting into the hands of the general public. But those days are long gone. So whether it's Benchmade with uh, their Rockwell hardness, the Rockwell hardness on their 3V in the uh, bailout, whether it's Benchmade with <laughs> giving money to Democrats, uh, whether it's Lion Steel with Soft M390 or any of the other companies, Best Tech, or, you know, I'm trying to remember all the companies that they tested. Um, you know, the days that you could do what you want and hope nobody would find out are gone. People are going to find out. You have got to stop behaving as if you can keep information from the general public. It doesn't work anymore. Those days are gone. Okay, so let's move on. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest. And we won't have these kind of problems anymore, right? And if you do make a mistake, instead of trying to hide it, just own it, right? I'm not saying every single mistake, you have to take out a, an article in Blade Magazine and publish it there. But when you make a mistake, people are going to find out. So just say, yep, we made a mistake. Here's what we're doing to remedy it. Let's move on with life. Now, the problem I suspect is that some manufacturers don't like the fact that those days are gone and they're going to you know, cling to those past times when they could do what they wanted and the average person couldn't find out or do anything about it. Uh, and, and that's just going to hurt them in the long run. So uh, there you go. So that's my, my initial response is manufacturers have got to realize, uh, and anyone in the public eye, anyone who's wealthy and powerful and influential is going to have to realize that the days are gone, the days of secrecy are gone, for they're, they're dead and good and dead, right? I'm glad that that's over and that we have more information available to us. So next point is be careful what you do with what you know. So number three, uh, right? So the first point was I'm a fan of accountability. Number two, manufacturers have got to realize they're accountable now. We are all going to know what they're up to and they better be able to justify those things. Number three, 
we as the community and ever and you in general as a person we need to be careful with what we know all right or perhaps what we don't know we've all heard the story of you know he's got just enough information to be dangerous okay and and that is very there's a very good chance that that's what's happening here right we're not metallurgists we're not experts we have this testing data and it's it's highly questionable whether the average general knife using public knows enough about metallurgy to do anything meaningful with that data okay now what you can know for example is if a, a company's manuf is a, if a company is advertising a particular rockwell hardness and not hitting it yeah that that's something we can go yeah you were just dishonest right or you made a mistake and and if the company just comes out and says you know what we thought it was reaching that level we we did something wrong with this batch or something is going on with our equipment or whatever okay that's fine, right? I'm not saying every company is just lying to us. I don't think that's the case. Um, and, and again, it comes back to what do we do with what we know? Does this testing result indicate that, you know, there's this grand conspiracy out there to sell us soft M390 and, and try to get us to think it's something awesome? And, and I don't think that's what's happening here, okay? So uh, what do we do with what we know? That's one of the things that we really need to kind of embrace in this whole situation is it's it's great that we have the information now make sure you're careful with it and and i've got to give you guys one example of this where sometimes we're just not qualified so i hear a lot of preachers i'm a preacher myself right i have some training in greek uh, but i'm no greek scholar right i don't read the bible directly in the original languages and most people don't even people with a lot of greek training don't often do that there are some who do uh, but anyway Here's my point. I often hear preachers make these long, elaborate arguments in their sermons about Greek words and their verb tenses and what that implies for this text or the meaning of a particular phrase or word or whatever. And oftentimes, okay, more often than I'm comfortable with, they are wrong about what they're saying, okay? They've misinterpreted their research. They've misinterpreted whoever they've read. You know, they may, they may get the verb tense right, okay? That's fairly easy to do. You know, there are lots of books that list the verb tenses of every word in the New Testament. But when it comes to, here's what, you know, then, then when the preacher goes on to say, well, this is what it means that this verb tense is this, and here's the implications we can draw from it, they very often go further than they ought to go and and a good clue that you're doing that is if you're saying something and you're drawing conclusions that the scholars who wrote the books you're using didn't draw you're probably getting a little too loose with uh you know you're you're here you're, you're doing more with the information than ought to be done with it let's just put it that way okay so I'm trying to switch things up a little bit here so that the the view changes every so often um, and so i appreciate uh, and so, I, yeah, I appreciate the Rockwell testing. I, I like to have that data. But let me say this. I appreciate more testing that I deem to be a little more practical. So Cedric and Ada with his Sisal rope testing, that I find highly, highly valuable. And I know that there are a couple of YouTubers associated with who are doing the same stuff, who are taking the, the Rockwell hardness and seeing how it correlates to actual cutting performance. And that's a different thing. And I see a lot of legitimacy in doing that. If someone wants to go through the effort of doing it, hey, more power to you. Now, I will say this, the, the Rockwell testing becomes secondary at that point, right? Because now you can just take this blade, see how long it cuts for, and, and you now know what the performance is. You know, whatever the number is on the Rockwell hardness is really irrelevant at that point because you've got data about the actual thing you want to comment on rather than on a secondary point that is related but not the actual thing, okay? Now, um, we do have to point out here that the testing and sharing that's being done, it's not exactly scientific, okay? So what they would have needed to do is have multiple Rockwell hardness testers, multiple models of each knife, and run through, you know, run 10 knives through 100 tests and then publish their results, right? That would be a more scientific approach to this. And so that's one of the things we need to keep in mind. There are a number of points along the line here where error is possible. Now, 
listen, if you're watching this, someone, you know, LTK or Blade Manta or whoever, Kurt or anybody else who's involved, right? I'm not saying don't publish your results. Not at all, right? I measure and weigh knives every day and I share the results online, okay? Uh, but I do always point out, and I think you guys have as well, that, hey, this is one knife, one test, right? I, I put this one knife on my one scale and this is what it weighed, right? I didn't test 100, I didn't test 1,000. Uh, Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors, he says the same thing. I didn't test 100, I didn't test 1,000. So, so let's keep that in the back of our minds as well. There are, you know, who knows how these machines are, well, how do we know for sure that these machines are calibrated to the same degree without actually going to these factories and seeing what they're doing and seeing how they conduct their test and then comparing how we conduct our tests and all that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of things that would need to be done for this to be an, an, a valid scientific result. And there's a reason that scientific journals exist. Well, <laughs> I say that, although there's been a recent, you know, many of you are probably aware of the fact that, you know, a couple of mathematicians got together and wrote some baloney articles and got them published in scientific journals, which does disparage the quality of scientific journals and demonstrate that there is bias happening there, even in a, a discipline that's not supposed to be biased. Okay. So I'll, I'll grant that point right away. But there is a reason that scientists tend to be pretty careful about publishing results and they try to replicate results on it in a number of different areas before they draw any conclusions. And that's something we haven't seen quite yet happening here. Okay, next point. The knife community, like all communities, has a propensity to be reactive, okay? Whatever situation you wanna talk about, it's, you know, we like drama. Uh, we like to see, you know, people get in a fight. We like to hear all the gory details. And, you know, that's just a sad fact of human existence. Uh, it's immaturity. It's, you know, trying to, to get your rocks off on the drama that's going on in other people's lives. And it's, it's a little pathetic. And while we'd like to think of our community as perhaps a little more mature, as a little less toxic, and, and I think that's true of some, some places, you know, Canadian Knife and Gear, for example, uh, a website, I mean, a Facebook page group that I'm a part of, they tend to be pretty good, although there's, there can be some drama there as well. Uh, but just be aware that we tend to be a little reactive and we have to be careful that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, and so just tone down your emotions, look at the situation objectively, and do whatever you feel is appropriate at that point, okay? Be careful of not getting caught up into the internet drama. Uh, manufacturers, as you're watching this, you need to realize, you know, there's a bit of a, a mob mentality developing here and you're gonna have to be careful how you handle this situation, what information you share and how you share it. Now, I do think you need to respond, okay? You really do, though, especially those manufacturers who have really failed. Uh, Lion Steel is a good example. Uh, you guys need to share some information and you need to get get out in front of this in an appropriate and helpful way. You need to be humble, okay? And you need to be honest with your consumers. Again, the time of keeping secrets from your customers is gone. Get over it and just be honest. Don't try to hold on to these days of the past when the internet didn't exist and everyone couldn't share everything that happened to them, okay? Uh, I think of... Uh, again, we'll bring it up because he does a lot of testing here. Uh, Cedric Nader Gear and Outdoors, when he had that steel will that was really soft, uh, there was a time when only him and steel will would know about that, right? He'd send them an email. They would say, oh man, something happened with our with our heat treating. We'll deal with it uh, and, and, you know, send him a new knife, okay? Well, now that's that's not the times anymore. Now everyone everywhere knows about every problem, okay? So manufacturers need to be aware of that and they need to behave accordingly, all right? Uh, if for you manufacturers out there, it's a matter of cost savings, right? If you're saying, look, we can't heat treat these steels as hard as you guys want them because we can't machine them after or something, or it costs too much to machine them after, you need to tell us that. Right, you need to tell us what's going on and and why it's happening, all right. And finally, uh, and so those that's how I would resp uh, you know I think both the community and manufacturers, you know, we're not enemies, okay. We ought to be, you know, manufacturers ought to be making awesome knives because they want to produce great knives. They love knives just like we do, ideally, and they want to share that. So that's what I'd like to see. 
consumers, again, we're not enemies. They're making the knives that we love to buy. And so we, we want to, you know, I, when, when one of these situations comes along, I sincerely hope that manufacturers do well, that they make changes and, and s behave better what's with, based on what they've learned from, from these kind of things happening. Um, and it, it always saddens me to see a manufacturer sort of get their hackles up and, and start fighting with the community. That's not helpful for anyone. And, and the community does, isn't, n no one benefits, let's just put it that way. Finally, all right, uh, not quite finally, but almost finally. Uh, do you need to send out all your knives for testing? Right? You're going to be like, oh man, I've got all these M390 knives. I guess I either throw them in the garbage or I'm going to have to send them to be tested. What am I going to do now? You know, what about 204P and what about, uh, you know, 20CV? Man, what, what happens here? Is the whole, is the sky falling? Uh, well, no, it's not, right? That's part of our overreactive nature as knife guys. We spend money because we want to know that we have the best and now we're being told you really don't have the best and it can be troubling okay so you don't need to send all your knives out to be tested you don't need to throw away all your m390 knives you need to just use your stuff okay if you use and sharpen your knives you'll know if something has gone wrong you'll know if it's not performing the way it should. Recall back when Cold Steel switched from CTSX-HP to S35VN and I said, this kind of sucks, CTSX-HP tends to perform better than S35VN. How did I know that? Did I send all my knives away for testing? Did I have the Rockwell har hardness numbers in front of me? No, I didn't. The reason I knew is because I use my knives, I sharpen my knives, I know how the steel ought to feel and what I like it to feel like when I'm sharpening stuff, when I'm using it. And so I could tell right away, uh, and, and any, you know, I'm not the only one, by the way, uh, but I could tell right away that S35VN was not going to perform as well as XHP. Now, it's a very small difference, okay? But the fact is, we hire out too much in our society. You know, we don't open the hoods of our cars, we don't repair anything, and as knife users, we kind of fall into that a little bit. I'm going to send my knife off to somebody else to be sharpened. I'm going to send my knife off to somebody else to be repaired and, and tweaked. Well, if you don't fix your stuff, you don't know about it. And especially if you don't sharpen your knives, you're not going to know about steel. And you, when you get these results about Rockwell hardness, you won't know how to interpret it. You won't know how that, how that impacts performance. Okay. And by the way, I should point out here that uh, there is a significant difference between, say, D2 or, or 8CR13 MOV or 9CR18 MOV and S30V or M390 or S35VN. Uh, and it's, it's not just a matter of Rockwell hardness. So you can't say, for example, that 8CR13 MOV hardened to 62 Rockwell is going to outperform M390 hardened to 58 Rockwell, right? There are way more other considerations to be that have to be accounted for there. And what I would recommend you do is go and watch, there's a Ferrum Forge video. I will find it, I'll put a link to it in the description box here, where Elliot goes into great detail discussing what makes a knife hold an edge for a prolonged period of time. And it's rather complex, and so, you know, you might have to put your thinking cap on while you watch that video, but it's well worth watching and will help, I think, our response to this whole bit of drama. Uh, so, to reiterate, I'm fine with the testing. I'm happy people are doing that testing and sharing the results with the community. If you're, if you're an Instagram influencer, if you're a YouTube reviewer, I would just make one suggestion, okay? Try to come at this with a little less motivation and a little more objectivity. Just cool it a little bit, share your results, but do it with humility and be prepared to get some flack from manufacturers you're likely going to and some others as well. Don't stop sharing it. Don't stop doing that, but just approach it with a level of maturity that will be helpful to yourself and to the whole community. All right, guys, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say about all of this down in the comments below. Maybe you completely disagree with every single thing I've said. If you do, I'd love you to hear it. I'd love to hear it. If you agree, if you want to tell a story, whatever the case may be, uh, do so down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.